Hey, uh, Quad Eddie fans, especially you sports fans, I am so honored right now to sit one of, by one of my childhood heroes, and he brought some stuff to uh, show me. This is Al Branco, and if there was a, a Hall of Fame for Visalia sports legends, he'd be at the very top of the list. Yeah. Al, tell him what you brought me here. <laughs> well, I brought you money, obviously. <laughs> yeah, you sure did, yeah. So tell tell us look at the look what he brought. Tell 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 us about this. This is a nineteen seventy COS football team. And um, one of the great games that COS ever played was at Ratcliffe Stadium. Not in Bakersfield. No, no. Uh, before that we played Fresno City College. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it, that was right. It came down right to the very end. And we beat them and we got into the playoffs. First game was at West Valley. They were undefeated, and uh, I believe we won that thirty-five to seven. Is that what it was? Thirty-four to six. You were close. Something, yeah, yeah. I, and they were undefeated. Then we played Chabot at Chabot. They were undefeated. Chabot is from the Sacramento area. Hayward. Hayward, yeah. Yeah, Alameda County. And then, of course, the the, the big deal, Eddie, was we're the host team for the state championship playing Fullerton College, and the state bosses said Mineral King Bowl was too small too small to host. Oh, the that's right. Game. I remember that. But our head coach, Bill Betancourt, he got, he got upset that Sunday afternoon. Made a, He regretted saying, well, Fullerton doesn't want to come to a hick town. I remember that comment. Yeah, that became a rallying point. So the game was moved to Bakersfield. We were still the home team. And uh, it was one of the really, really good games in my experience. Oh, it, I, it's one of the most, in my, I was, I've been a, or a Visalia sports fan for many, many years. And look, I, I want to say this one thing. Yesterday, I have a great life here of really hard work. I, every lunch I get to sit around, and drink coffee and bullshit all the cool people that come in there, <laughs> this guy right here. And I said, boy, I'd sure like to have something from COS football to hang on the wall. Because you regulars, you know, I like sports memorabilia and it's all over the place in here. But uh, so I asked Al if he'd bring me uh, some sports. Man, you brought me the Mona Lisa <laughs> of COS <laughs> sports memorabilia. This is the 70 championship team. That is one of the great sporting events that ever happened in this town. Exactly. That's the only state championship team. I, I, I don't think, I don't know of any other like COS basketball or, or baseball never had a champ state. But, well, I know in the 50s, Glenn McMillan and, yes. and Jim Garrett, uh, uh, Art Browning. Art Browning what was on the state championship team. 1957, the only baseball. Sure, I wasn't even born yet. Well, I was just a kid yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a baby. Well, I, I must tell you that the men's basketball has two championships. State. Do they? Polly Wilhelmson, I think, was 54. And then Keith Hughes, either in 82 or 84, he he had a state champion. Oh, I yeah, yeah I do you remember were around. That. Yeah, I was around. Then Tom Gilchrist who was the men's coach for a long time, took over the women's program, and he had an undefeated team. My sisters played for him. They yes, were on that un yes. undefeated team. I don't know about that, but, yeah, they were 35-0 and 0, won the state. Wow, that's for COS, in, in, in the glory days of COS, it was an amazing time. You know what, Coach? It, uh, those games were like, that was the event of the town. <laughs> Do you remember how many people would go to your games and there would be people standing room only up on the hills? And that's why the, they didn't think that the stadium was big enough because you, they knew you guys were a big draw, man. Well, and you should be proud of yourself. There were a lot of people involved in what happened after that because 1975, um, 74, we had a championship team. So 1975, Ivan Crookshanks, the president. But you know, he was a great guy. I used to hang out with his yeah. son, John Spidell, and uh, Ivan was always such a great. He was great to me, but was he 
a lot of reason why COS was so successful. Exactly. He was oh, a wonderful God. human being. Oh, he was a hands-on guy. So he decided South Side of Mineral King Bowl should be doubled. Yeah. Oh, he was one responsible he for was, that? And the verbal agreement, as I was told by Tom Gilchrist, who was the AD at right. that time, right. COS would do the South Side, by say a school district would do the North Side. Oh. And never happened, of course. It was a verbal agreement. You know, you know what's a shame. I, I, I probably this negative to kind of bring it up, but it, I just can't believe COS is playing over at the campus now and not in the bowl. I understand. A lot of people feel yeah, that well, way. Well, I mean, they, they, it's just not like the old days when you drew those kind of crowds. And I understand economics and all that. The, the, state, the field looks beautiful. It is. And it, it's a fantastic uh, field, but I don't know that I, I just have great memories of those days when it was like going to uh, a big time event. But hey, I want to um, I want to ask you another thing about this 70 team. You were the assistant coach. I was the offensive line coach. And OK. And unfortunately, the coaches aren't in this picture. I know. But, but we're going to I'm going to name them. But uh, Bert Holm, you were what? The offensive line. Coach. Offensive line, and Bert was defensive line. Yep. And was Flatley there? The no, he was not there. Merle Flatley was another great coach. Yeah. Um, there were just four of us. Oh, wow. Yeah, think about that. Low budget guys, and the well, four guys won the state championship. Well, if we had more than that, we couldn't get organized. <laughs> Who's this? This guy named Jerry Strong. He, he, I don't remember him. No, I know. He was only here one year. Excellent. Really a Let's, good I, coach. I want to talk to you about a couple of the players that were on that team. Okay, now. I, I was like 12 years old, but these guys were like my heroes because I was, you know, I, I hung around Darren Holt, so I was getting to go to the games uh, because of Bert. But uh, one of the key players on that team was your fullback, and he's a regular around here. Mr. David Mose. David Mose, Mount and, Whitney guy. Yeah, he went to Whitney. And then, but I, the guy that I remember like it was yesterday, and I, it, this is a name that anybody that wasn't there is not going to remember, but I remember him well was Ivan Weiss. Everybody was, remembers Ivan. Hey, was he like like the local Dick Butkus or something? He was an amazing, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah, he was an amazing defensive player. And you had just a uh, wonderful running back named Fred Leathers. That's right. And he just passed away yes. recently, right? Right. He, right. Was, he was one hell of a running back. Speaking of him passing away, he was like 70, right? I think uh, probably, yeah, 70s. because I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he passed away last spring. Yes. Because I went to two services for Fred, and Fred was a Hanford High School guy. And they had a service at one of the parks in Hanford. And then last um, August, Hanford High School had their Hall of Fame induction, and Fred was inducted to their Hall of Fame. Well, he's well deserving of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, uh, on that team was, I, I'm going to bring up a name. I don't think he was on this team, but uh, there was a punter in those early days named. Don Feely. Was he, yeah, that came after. After. He, yeah, he played for us in, uh, I know he was on our 74 championship team, and he was a nose guard and a punter, left footer. I remember. Yeah. He he would punt the ball. Oh, yeah. He would go the whole length of the field. He'd get him. Get us out of so much trouble with his punting. <laughs> the thing about Don was by the time the ball was down, he had his average figured out. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, he was a he was a hell. Did he, he did he go on to play pro football? He got he didn't he play for Seattle? Played for the University of Washington. Got a football scholarship for his punting. Yeah. I know. I re I remember that. He became a school teacher in Santa Rosa. Uh, married into Bob Felt's family. I think he married Bob's sister. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, Bob, could, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Feltz was a, he played base, he was a hell of a baseball player. He played for Burt Holt in the early 70s. Uh, there was a lot of guys that hang around here that were on that team too, by the way. And he played at Fresno State after that. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have a good memory. 
I was there, man. Sure. You were sneaking in the games all the it, time. Yeah, it's amazing. All this vodka that I, I drink, I can still remember all this stuff. I can't remember what happened yesterday, but I remember that stuff a million years ago. I want to say another thing. You know, this, this, this game was played 54 years ago. Right. A lot of these guys are no longer, some of these guys are no longer with us. This was the coach. <laughs> Look at this guy. He looks like, what, what is Dick Clark or something? Hey. Man, it's because he exercises. Him and his wife, Joanne, you used to see him running all over town. I thought, man, I'm drinking a glass of vodka. And I said, man, I wish I could be inspired by this, dude. Eddie's whispering to me. He wants me to ask about the kids. Oh, Craig. Craig's a customer in here, but they were good football players, too. Craig and his brother Brent, Brent yeah, both yeah. played on the defensive side of the ball when I was head coach. Yeah. So I did not coach them directly. Let them make their own mark with the defensive coaches. And, but you were yeah. a proud dad of them. Oh, well, yeah, they, they're good guys, you know. Yeah, no, they good. are. They come in now. They're, they're, you raised two great gentlemen. Hey, yeah. listen. Um, I want to. I don't want this to go on forever because I know you got to go. But listen, how did you end up coming to Visalia? Where did you go to college? I was a Bay Area guy, and my. Oh, you don't act like it. <laughs> well, I've been in Visalia a long time. This yeah, is my home now. Makes but, a man out of you. Um, San Leandro, which is right between Oakland and Hayward. Cal Berkeley wanted me to come out and play football. God, thank God you didn't go there. And uh, they didn't want to give me a scholarship because I wasn't big enough. But my girlfriend was going there, so I went there. Unbeknownst to me, I know, I know. Unbe unbeknownst to me, right before, you know, right after high school graduation, she fired me, got rid of me. That was a, See? That was a tough thing. Thinking with little Al. But... But the football worked out okay. Yeah, okay. Well, it, all, all things are for a reason. Yes, yeah, yeah, 1958. And uh, the freshman only played four games. We didn't play on the varsity. Figure out his age, folks. He was in college in 1958. Jeez. Well, some Golden Bears will remember the season of 58 was the last time that Cal Bears played in the January Rose Bowl. Hey, that was Joe Cap. Joe Cap was the quarterback. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Folks, a lot of you young people ain't going to remember Joe Cat, but he went on to play. He was one of those one handlebar uh, quarterbacks that played for the Minnesota Vikings. He, right. was, he, was a, he, was a, he was a man's man, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Well, you mentioned baseball. So there were guys from my school that came down here and played baseball. Always talked very highly of COS. Our quarterback from high school came down here. He's writing me letters. What a great place, Buck. So the next year, five of us came down here. I told my dad, I'm coming down. He said, well, one less mouth for me to feed. <laughs> I said, okay, dad, thanks a million. But, but it worked out. I mean. And, you, and okay, you came down and went to Mount Whitney. Well, I came down here, played football one year, baseball one year. Oh, at COS? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the coach was Dick Jacobson. At I knew Dick. And um, was Bert not? He was over at Exeter, but no, he wasn't even at Exeter by that. Yeah, he might have been at Redwood, I don't remember, but anyway, uh, I had to sit out a year because I had gone to a four year school. Jacobson said, Why don't you come back and be a student coach? Because somebody thought I was going to Cal Poly, and luckily, I did not because I mean, their starting fullback says, You don't want to come here, this program is all messed up. Didn't go, came back here, was student coach. That was the best college class I ever took, was being on that field and living with football players. On the job training. Right? On the job training. Very good. And that's the year 1960 when the Cal Poly plane went down. And I oh, had, that's another famous story. If we had yeah. about 80 hours, I could visit <laughs> with this guy and we could talk many oh, yeah. in here. Yeah. They made a movie about that. Yeah. Oh, 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 that was Marshall. That, I think that was, that, that was Marshall. But yeah. who was on that plane? Who was wasn't on that plane? Wasn't it uh, Madden? Right. He was done. He was he was out of football, but he was coaching them. Yeah. Uh, Alan Hancock College. 
Yeah, but Madden was in, in that. Could have been on that plane. Could have right? been on plane. Uh, and he, that, that's the guy that ended up being a great Raider coach and made even millions of dollars making video games. So I was here for the fall and went home and a couple of phone calls. I ended up in Washington State, played football up there. When you get out of school, you start writing letters for jobs. Bob Morgans was the assistant superintendent here. He wrote me a personal letter, job description. Would you like you to come down for an interview during Easter break? I came down for an interview, signed a contract. 1964, I'm at well, Whitney. Made big bucks back then. You want to know? I remember this very well, Keith. How much? Take home, $328. Oh you won't God. believe that. I know you won't believe that. Yeah, but what was your house payment back then? 80 bucks? Uh, we were renting a house for 90, yes. 90. I remember we, one time the great Johnny Bench was here and he gave us a speech and he. He was said, he, yeah, I'm really happy for all the money these guys are making now. And when he, when he won the MVP back in the late 60s, his salary was $28,000. And now they're filling up uh, semi-truck loads full of money to pay the backup catcher. Yeah. Jeez. And, you know, God bless them. And so be it. Yeah, I'm super happy. I mean, they paid me to coach. Yeah. That's a pretty good deal. You know, I feel the same way. I, I get paid to drink martinis and play my guitar. So, I mean, it's all. I, it's yeah, but how, how about the guitar? Are you good at it? Yeah. I've heard you were good. Yeah, I'm good at it. I, mean, yeah. I, my, I sat on my fat ass and played that guitar for 30 years. I ought to be good at it. Nothing wrong with martinis. No. But the worst one I ever had, though, it was wonderful. Oh, yeah. They're all good. <laughs> Like other things, you know. Yeah, some are better than others. What, Eddie? Oh yeah, let's let's talk about uh, how many how many guys that you coached went into the NFL? Can you even remember? Quite a few. Well, yeah. There, well, there were three years that three guys went to University of Arizona. Uh, one signed with Seattle. One signed with Buffalo. And one signed with Detroit Lions. Do you remember the names? Uh, Ruben I, I, Rodriguez was from Woodlake. He was a kicker for Seattle. John Kaiser from Wisconsin. He was an outside linebacker. He played Buffalo and Seattle. And then uh, uh, Danny Lockett was from Georgia. Played, yeah, I don't remember any of those. What years did you coach at COS? I mean, when did you get that? You, you, got, you got the head coaching job after Baldock? After Bettencourt. Mill Bettencourt. Mill Bettencourt. Baldock left in the spring of, of 69, went to San Diego State. Bill well, had, he ended up at Taft College, too. He ended up. Baldock. That's where he ended up. Yeah. But Bill Bettencourt became the head coach. He hired me at Whitney, then he hired me at COS. 73, I became the head coach. In 73, tell when? My last year was 88. 16 years, 16 I believe. 16 years. And you know they were great years. I, I, for you younger people, you just you just have no idea what a superstar this guy was. I mean, he <laughs> drew crowds, man. And, well, the whole town was great. That really supported the sports. Yes. Huh? But you did a great job. I mean, we had... The whole event was amazing. You remember that uh, guy that did the music program that had a great month? Weston. Dwayne Weston. Dwayne Weston. Had the marching band. Yeah. The only problem was, Keith, halftime, after the halftime show, a lot of people left. You yeah, know? they came to see the halftime. Oh, boy. They came to see that football. But that was just great. That, that, that we just, because of Ivan Crookshanks putting yeah. all these great people together, COS football was uh, an event that if you weren't there, you just can't imagine how great it was. Well, hey, I got to end this, but I want to say that I am so honored to get to hang out with one of uh, a truly uh, legendary Visalian, Al Franco. Thanks for coming and hanging out with hey, me and, and bringing hey, all this. My pleasure. Yeah, no, sure. pleasure's all nice mine. Nice meeting you, Eddie. All right, Eddie, turn the back. Thank you, Crawdaddy fans. Appreciate it. You bet.